All right, you, you can actually do analysis. Here's the thing, what's the importance of this, you know, doing all this analysis? Imagine, eh, I'll give you one example. You have a river. You want to design a bridge. You know, your bridge abutment or the pier of the bridge, right, will of course at the uh, river banks, right, it would actually affect the width of the river itself. So what would happen to the flow in the river? Whether it will change, you want to maintain it, you want to avoid backwater flow, you are the one who will determine after doing the analysis. Okay, so that would be the example for the construction lah, all right, of the uh, channel itself. Uh, so you, you get to, you know, learn all about this. It's very interesting, eh? hydraulics. Okay, so um, and then chapter 4 is about a uh, non-uniform flow in open channel. Now for non-uniform flow in open channel, right, uh, you get to analyze, um, you know, flows uh, which is um, when it's rapid because for the classification, right, non-uniform flow can be further classified into two, which is rapidly very flow and gradually very flow. And then for rapidly very flow, when the depth of flow or velocity of the flow changes uh, rapidly within a relatively short distance, right, what would happen to that flow? Uh, an example that we are going to look at in our class, in our uh, course, would be hydraulic jump. Uh, so we are going to analyze all those. What would happen? So when uh, you know when rapidly very flow uh, flow occurs, uh, when hydraulic jump occurs, what would happen? Because it uh, it it is actually um, is affected by the uh, discharge. You know by the depth of flow. You know basically uh, all those lah. Okay, which is, you know, we, we will learn about the fruit number lah later. Okay, and then for gradually very flow, which is when the flow uh, changes, the depth of the flow changes slowly. When I said that changes, of course, uh, is related to the velocity as well. Velocity definitely will change, all right? Okay, it's, this is a law of uh, continuity lah. All right, so when it changes gradually along a uh, relatively long distance, right, um, you will... I got to analyze, you know, what changes. For example, just like in chapter 3, we talk about, you know, when there's an obstruction, right? If there's a, there, there would be, if there is an occurrence of backwater flow, you know, backup of water, all right, behind the structure, right? So those are, you know, the gradually type of flow where you got to, to um, analyze how far, well, you know, the effect would be. All right, uh, upstream. How far the effect would be upstream, and what kind of changes? What what would happen to the depth of flow? So we will do that in uh, chapter four point two lah, uh, section four point two, and then um, it is all related, nah. Eh? All this uh, chapter, especially chapter one to four, is all related, and then chapter five, we got to know about hydraulic structures. For example, Swiss gate, spillway, weir, because you know. For example, we use weir in uh, chapter 3, all right, to give you an example of changing, uh, you know, risk bottom broadcasted weir. So, it's, it's all related, okay? Um, so, and then we also learn about, you know, weird energy dissipators, PV and such, lah, all those, and what are the implications of this hydraulic structure, right? And then chapter 6, we got to learn about hydraulic machines. Um, where we got to learn about two machines which are the pump and turbine okay uh, so we got to learn about uh, uh, apart from that we also learn about hydraulic similarity lah. i think you have also learned about uh, you know some similarity analysis in your fluid mechanics uh, we, where you use this Rayleigh and also buckingham pie theorem to do some uh, similarity analysis lah. Uh, we will we actually will touch is we touch a bit on that in hydraulic simulate as well. So in a hydraulic machine, we'll learn about you know um, turbines and pumps. How you know how to determine the power and efficiency of those, and what would be what would happen? Uh, what is the importance of cavitation? We would not you know 
Good cavitation is is definitely we want to eliminate that that will damage our turbine and pump. So we we are going to look at that now. So that's about it. We have in hydraulic six chapters. All right, um, and then uh, we and you know it's actually spread out lah along fourteen weeks lah. Okay, um, it doesn't matter if we are too slow in one chapter. We we'll, uh, we hope we can catch up lah. All right, uh, using you know we just take you know, some of the week from the other chapters. I think normally we can finish it. Lah. Okay, for this course, right, this is the assessment distribution. Eh? Um, assignment is 5%. Test, there, there would be two tests, all right? It, uh, each test is 10%, so two would be 20%. Project is 20%. Increase will be five percent. I know the allocation for assignment and increase uh, is small, which is five percent. But actually, assignment help you, right, to do, uh, to understand all these chapters. Okay, so um, assignment will be provided for each chapter, and then finally, alright, final exam constitute fifty percent of your uh, assessment for this course. And then we have, of course, um, you are going to use author and for synchronous learning, right? Such as uh, our section today, we are going to use Google Meet. Lah. And then, you know, you see this reference by Venti Chow, right? Open Channel Hydraulics. I already shared this. I uploaded this in your author. Um, you may look at it. Actually, this is my re main reference. Um, it was, I think it was in... That reference, right? Like, this is uh, that reference is actually uh, is published in nineteen fifty nine. Right, that is how many uh, decades ago, right? But still, is very relevant. I'm still referring to this um, reference until now. Alright, it's a very good book. Right, when the child, um, and then um, make sure. Eh? Make sure your attendance is uh, eighty percent and above. If you have less than eighty percent attendance, you will not be allowed uh, to attend your final attend to your final exam. Lah, basically, or uh, actually, once you get less than eighty percent, you are not able to sit for any lecture anymore. Lah, or your uh, any other assessment. Lah, uh, that you have to know. Normally. I would normally eh, update your attendance every week. Eh. At the end of the week, I will update you eh, for the two classes that we have. Um, and now, I hope um, we can communicate eh, with each other through uh, the WhatsApp group. Eh. If you have any question, it's good too. If you share in the group, uh, if, I'm, uh, if I couldn't uh, attend to your question, Maybe your friends in hydraulics could help me out, or if you have sometimes because um, a couple of you might have the same questions, so I could actually answer it to cater for all uh, in the same group. Okay, um, I hope you don't mind. Eh? Unless you have personal matter, eh? uh, you can ask me personally. I don't mind. All right. So that is our lecture plan. Do you have question on our like uh, our plan for uh, hydraulics? Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Yes, I hear. Uh, do you have chapter for test and quiz? Chapter. Ah, uh, what chapter? Oh, normally, eh? Uh, um, here's the thing. Uh, Regarding the allocation of chapter for test 1 and test 2, uh, typically, I would say typically, uh, why now is, um, we, we actually have those ready already, the question is just that um, I'm not sure whether um, we have seven sections. Uh, some of the, uh, sometimes there will be section that would be left out because, uh, you know, they couldn't cover chapter 1 or 2 uh, or 3. Uh, for first test, so we will only cover the the chapter that been covered lah by the other section. But typically, test one will cover chapter one and two. Test two will cover chapter three and four. Is that okay? 
Okay. Would you say answer? Alright. Alatif, eh? Yeah, alatif, eh? Yes. Okay. Anyone? Any other question? Uh, Me. Please. Yeah. Yang mana? Aiman ke Zaidatul? <laughs> Aiman. Aiman dulu. Okay. Alright, Aiman. Uh, miss, can we get uh, some date uh, that you gonna do? do this test or quiz. Okay, I will post it soon in our WhatsApp group. Is it okay? Because I'm I need to consult the coordinator first. Because um for test and final exam uh, it should be done simultaneously with other sections. Is it okay? okay? I'll let you know. So so once I put out in other WhatsApp I share in WhatsApp group with you you should um, block the crash uh, the uh, dates lah. Alright, thanks so I'm for raising this up. Okay, um, then I got the right, the next question. <laughs> yeah, uh, time to ask, uh, do we need to buy any books for hydraulics? Uh, or no. no, 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 no. The reference that I share with you, right, the Venti Chao, right, actually I adopted many of, uh, you know, the info from that book. Uh, for example, mining coefficient, uh, the table, the tabulated mining coefficient, I adapt, uh, adapt, adapt and adapt lah from there. And then there will be hydraulic function also. Uh, even though I plot out the graph, I, I adapted from that too. And the coefficient for FUN and FVG, I also adapted that. I will explain then, right, when the chapter comes. Um, I adapted from that. Although I already checked, I plot my own graph, I plot, you know, my own numbers and things like that in the slides, right? Um, I, I managed to detect error as well. Uh. Even my slide, eh? um, again, <laughs> I would like to inform, uh, you have to take note eh, about this. Sometimes, the slide, right, that I provided you, the, the notes, like the yeah, lecture notes, I, when I draw something, I uh, do some uh, uh, calculation or uh, equation, I put out equation, I tend to copy those equation from earlier slide, alright, so uh, they are bound to have some error because I forgot to change either, I forgot to put square, uh, things like that, so sometimes it affect my answer as well, please, please, um, you, you, for me, once you are in this class and you have learned, you should be one of the expert too, alright, uh, to check, to help me uh, check whether you know all those calculation is correct or not. Uh, remember that eh? it's not like uh, it's it's not free for mistake. Uh, they're bound to be some you know minor typographical or grammatical errors lah. Alright, okay. Um, so yes, saya. Yeah, saya. Uh, nak tanya lagi, doktor seorang je ke right. kontak kelas kita? Yes. Oh. Why? Tak sebab dalam jadual saya tengok ada banyak nama. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll be the, the only one in charge of this section. Okay, that's fine. Are you fine with it? Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, no. Okay, that's, okay, that's good. Um, any, any other question? Um, is it okay that we stop at 3? Or even be... Okay. Uh, can I? Oh, you know why? Because... The, uh, here's the thing. Um, why I want to, I don't want to, I don't like uh, say. It's like I don't prefer uh two hour session. Is I I think after one actually after half an hour or one hour will be very tired already. Uh, because you I think you only listen to me. Okay, I'll be doing the talking. Uh, so at you at one point you get bored lah. That's why I normally eh. Uh, normally, I'll conduct my class roughly about one hour only. So, I hope you don't mind, eh? And then, I will give you exercise to do lah to compensate for that extra addition, uh, that uh, remaining one hour. You are okay, eh? I hope. It's, it's okay, doctor. No problem. Okay, that's good. That's good. No problem. Uh, and then, okay. <laughs> Another thing, right? Um, uh, I forgot what I want to say. Uh, you know, if you have any question, you can... Even during the class, right, when I was giving lecture, right, through this synchronous session, you can always raise up your hand and ask me question, interrupt me. Well, even when I'm teaching, right, it's good, all right? If you let me know if something is wrong, okay. Uh, okay, any other, any, any other question?
no no more eh? okay if no more let's start our first chapter eh? you are okay eh? alright so our first chapter will be only half an hour eh? uh, because I said I want to start after one hour right so let's look at our first chapter then uh, 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 I have some exercise for you eh? this is not assignment eh? And uh, this the exercise that I'll be giving you because assignment one to six I post it uh, soon in your offer, but the one that I'm asking you to do is just to make up for the remaining one hour, right? Our uh, session, and we will uh, discuss the solution next uh, next class, which is on Thursday, right? Okay. Okay. okay, so our class would be uh, normally we'll, we'll meet up lah through Google Meet. Our class is uh, every Monday eh? uh, and every Thursday throughout the 14 week. Uh, Monday will be 2 to 4, Thursday would be 8 to 10 a.m. Like, um, uh, when I said 8 o'clock, if you don't mind, if you don't, I, if you don't have any objection, uh, I hope we can start our class at 8 lah. Is it okay? Um, 8 or, you know, 8.05, it doesn't matter. We're waiting for you to join the class, right? Okay. Uh, I've explained about this, so today we are going to look at Introduction to Open Channel Flow. Um, Alright, so what is the, um, at the end of this chapter, what would you learn about? Uh, you will learn about, you know, you can define and explain types and states of flow in open channel, okay? Um, when I say type, this one I already talked about, you know, uniform, non-uniform, steady, unsteady flow. The state, what type of state is based on fruit number and Reynolds number. Uh, fruit number, whether it's uh, subcritical, supercritical, or critical flow. Reynolds number, whether it's laminar, transitional, or turbulent state. Alright, so we are going to look, look at that, alright, in this chapter. Uh, identify types of open channel. So you, uh, we are going at uh, in this chapter also. We are going to look at that, and then we also would define uh, uh, open channel geometry. That means you have to do some calculation uh, about the hydraulic radius, uh, area of uh, uh, flow, area of flow, um, you know, uh, and uh, water parameter and such. Uh, all right. Uh, we have different types of open channel. And we are going to look at it. Uh, Alright. Okay, so what is open channel flow? Eh? Um, open channel flow has free surface which is subjected to atmospheric pressure. Uh, which is, uh, you can see the sketch here. Uh, you have, uh, you know, the surface there. Eh? Alright, in this sketch, sketch also. Oh, by the way, do you see my cursor or not? My arrow? Yeah. Yes, we see. Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, you know, uh, you this is some sort of uh, almost similar to a trapezoidal channel uh, section. B is the bottom width. T is the top width. Because it's not similar. If it is a rectangular section, B will be the same as T. It has the same width of a rectangle, but in this case, B, T is larger than B, lah, all right? And then, what is Y? Y would be the depth of flow. Remember, eh, for the, when I said depth of flow is different from the depth of the channel, or height of channel, all right? I would use height of channel and depth of flow. So, be careful about that, eh? So, this is, this Y is actually the depth of flow. Uh, we will look at it whether it's normal flow or what. Uh. Right. Now, A, what is A? A is the area of the cross section. You know, this is longitudinal profile. This is cross section. When I cut through this, I will see this cross section that made across the channel. Okay. So, A is the flow, the area 
the cross sectional area of this flow. Okay. Um, so what is u? U is the velocity of the flow. Eh? All right. So um, we have the term now. What makes the flow flows? All right. The, or if there is water in it, any fluid lah, in the channel flows is if there's a gradient. This is gravitational flow lah, then it will flow. If the um if the channel is horizontal and there's no external force acting on it, the flow would not flow, right? Because it's, it will be stagnant unless there will be external force, for example, additional discharge coming in, then it will be uh, it will it will flow lah. But if you look at, you know, in drains, uh, uh, you know, I think you can see, you know, you can see drains all around you, right? If it's horizontal, right, uh, the, 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 and there's no external force, if there's water in it, it won't flow. Unless there's a gradient, then the water will flow, right? Uh, examples, okay, of open channel is flow in river, canals, uh, partially free, full sewer, I'll talk about this, and drains and flow of water over land, alright? Now, let's look at it, this example. This is like a uh, partially full in a circular channel, alright? Now, have you learned about pipe flow in your fluid mechanics? I believe you have learned about pipe flow, right? Um, remember you use this um, Moody chart to analyze your frictional losses in pipe flow. Uh, anyone? You, you still remember right? what is pipe flow? Have you learned about it in fluid mechanics? Anyone? No? No, you don't want to answer. You forgot. I learned about fluid mechanics some over years ago. You, I think you just learned it last semester or one year ago, right? Am I right? And anyone? <laughs> Saya dah tahu. Tak ada lah doktor. Eh? Mekanik. Oh, doktor. Yang lepas. You, you don't learn. We, we transfer the. We transfer the fluid mechanic. Eh wait wait. When you say you transfer fluid mechanic. That, that means you have taken it in your diploma. Am I right? Yes yeah. doctor. Yeah. yeah. So you have taken it. Hey. Mana 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 mana. <laughs> Sebenarnya dah ambil Tapi semua lupa Jadi jawab ni tak ambil lah kan <laughs> Okay yeah. Yeah. Alright Okay now you, Because I know you have to use Moody chart, you have to use Darcy Weisbach formula And things like that to analyze pipe flow eh? Pipe flow is different eh? Pipe flow you have If you use this Bernoulli's theorem You are going to have this pressure Term in it but for open channel, you don't have pressure, you know. Why? Because um, the surface is acted by uh, atmospheric pressure. So it's actually not affected by the pressure in the uh, pipe itself. For example, even though you know, in the figure, right, it's, it's a, in the form of pipe, right, but we cannot classify this as pipe because if you look at the the flow in it, right? Okay, for example, if this is storm water, if you look at this storm water, right, the surface is acted by uh, atmospheric pressure, right? Not the pressure of the pipe, eh? So be careful of that. So, by definition, all flow which has free surface, all right, is termed as open channel flow. So, in this case, this is open channel flow because the free surface, okay, permukaan bebas, aliran tersebut, ialah uh, di, uh, ialah uh, dikenakan uh, tekanan yang masih parah lah. By the way, um, do we have an international student here? I remember seeing a meme, international student. Any any international student here? Tak ada lah, semua local lah. Uh, I remember there's a meme, but it's okay lah, I'll come back to that. Maybe he's not he, he he's not in the class. Eh? Okay, um, this is as as an example an example also, right? Okay, you know when I show this Tahan River Rapids, like 
and you get to analyze this in uh, chapter 4, which is the rapidly very flow, the hydrate jump, all right? And then you have this meandering river. It's very interesting eh, to learn about hydraulics because you get to analyze all this. Uh, um, and, you know, if you take, um, you know, um, elective courses in your, um, uh, in, in your fourth or uh, uh, in your fourth year, right? Uh, you can also determine which part is being eroded or accretion will occur. Uh, you and uh, you know, uh, by truth analysis, uh, basically, um, when you have such a meandering river, the profile will always change. That means it's dynamic uh, with time. For example, at this moment, you'll see this shape. The next you know, a couple of months or years, the main main day will change its shape because there will be part that be that will be eroded, there will be part that will be uh, accretion of sediment. You, you, at one point, right, this part here will join, and this will form you know a separate island. Well, well, when I say it is island, it's not really island lah. All right, it will be separated or isolated from that river. Uh, things like that it will just cut through because due to uh, erosion part uh, it's very interesting eh, to uh, analyze all this now um since you have learned about pipe flow but um i think you need time lah, right, to refresh um the knowledge of pipe flow and um, this this uh, screen right your, the screen that you are looking at right now shows the difference between pipe flow and open channel flow so on the left you have pipe flow on the right you have this open channel flow you see uh, on the pipe flow right you have a pressure so basically uh, the y2 all right essentially is written basically it should be written in p over uh uh, P uh, is actually P, all right, which is a pressure, all right, and then uh, in open channel flow, you have Y. I think next time I'll change this, all right. I think I just copy the Y, it should be in terms of pressure. Uh, this is actually the height, la, the height of flow, all right, but it's actually can be written in uh, uh, P over rho G, la, huh? okay. Now, back flow in back flow, right, the fluid completely fills the pipe cross section but it's not in open channel remember you said you have free surface that means the water the flow it would not completely fill the cross section and then the second uh, characteristic would be in pipe flow the fluid flows under pressure however for open channel flow the flow will occur due to gravitational flow or force. That means it's being influenced by the slope, lah, right? The longitudinal slope. When I say longitudinal slope, it's either sometimes we use it as bad slope or bottom slope. It's the slope on this this bottom, eh, channel bottom. It's, it's actually is longitudinal profile. Right? If you look at this, right, it's not a cross, right? It's not a cross section, so that's why we term this as, as longitudinal slope, right? The word, the, the term longitudinal, right? Keratan memanjang lah, basically. Eh? Okay. And then, um, hydraulic grid line does not coincide with water surface. If you look at this hydraulic grid line, which is actually Z2 plus Y2, right? Does not coincide with water surface, okay? However, okay, Z2 and Y2 for open channel coincide with the water surface, eh? Okay. Because... You have pressure, right? That's why you have this Y2 and it doesn't coincide with the uh, 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 water surface. And then uh, the fourth uh, element would be maximum velocity occur at the center of pipe flow. Uh, when you look at the distribution of the uh, velocity all right, in pipe flow, it's in the middle, all right? will have maximum it goes like that right it goes like that so the least velocity will occur at the um, wall of the pipe whereas the maximum velocity is in the middle however for open channel maximum velocity initially it should be at the surface 
request is not affected by the roughness of your uh, you know channel lining. However, because of frictional, all right, surface tension and also uh, it could be wind friction, all right, the maximum velocity will occur slightly below the free surface. Okay, but not in the middle, eh? Right? All right. The uh, I will show the next slide will will uh, I will show uh, how the distribution of velocity will look like for open channel flow. And then finally, velocity distribution is symmetrical in pipe access. About pipe access, eh? I told you right. The uh, is actually maximum in the middle, but not all right. Uh, um, open channel velocity distribution will depend on channel roughness and eh? and channel roughness will also depend on what type of lining on the channel. For example, concrete channel will have uh, you know uh, higher velocity, whereas um, a channel in river with all those gravel and things like that, where the roughness is higher, you it, it will definitely reduce the velocity. Okay. Um, and then, um, why do we learn about open channel flow? Eh? Uh, we actually learn open channel flow because we can analyze flow. Uh, we can determine the depth, uh, uh, velocity, um, therefore the discharge in rivers and other open channels. Eh? And then we can also analyze the changes of flow, depth and velocity. Uh, in the cases of, uh, you know, uh, flow over wheel and also constriction, uh, which is uh, injector trailer, and then changes of river stage during flood. When you have additional discharge coming in, what would happen? Uh, we can learn about, uh, we will do, you know, we, we can actually get uh, info, determine what kind of changes uh, since we have learned hydraulics, all right, and then surface runoff from rainfall over land, we also can analyze that. We can determine the depth and how far it's spread over the land when there's rain, and uh, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, we can do optimal channel design. Uh, we there's a section on the best, most hydraulically efficient channel section, so we are able to do that, lah. And others, there are so many. All right, uh, practical application from use when we have learned hydraulics, all right? Um, and then, um, okay, this topic, look, we are going to look at, you know, flow parameters and geometric elements. Uh, so we are going to look at all this, uh, these variables uh, or geometric elements that we are going to learn, which we are going to use throughout uh, most probably chapter 1 to 5, lah. okay? Chapter 1 to 5. Um, Chapter 6 is about, um, you know, uh, pump and turbine. So, it's not really open channel flow, alright? Uh, pump and turbine, eh? uh, it's actually there's pressure, okay, in the, in the pipe flow, lah, basically. So, chapter 1 and 5, we are going to look at, you know, open channel flows. Um, now, depth of flow and normal depth of flow. When I say normal depth, it's actually the depth which is measured perpendicular to your uh, bottom uh, of the bottom of the channel, which makes, you see, uh, when you look at this diagram, uh, the D is actually measured from free surface and it makes that, that, vertical, uh, that, uh, that is actually vertical to your channel's bottom. So that is your D. Your depth Y, the depth of flow Y is actually vertical. That means uh, to go, eh, vertical measure from free surface to the bottom. However, okay, in a hydraulic spread, I it doesn't matter. When I use Y, it's actually, it represents Y and D as well. So don't worry about that. Eh? So normally, we'll just use Y. Lah. Why? Why? Eh? Because in open channel flow, we'll do, we'll have some assumption that means the slope of the channel is very small. When the slope of the channel is very small, okay, uh, D is actually Y cosine theta. When it's small, cosine theta is almost equal to 1. So therefore, D is almost equal to 1. So therefore, in our class, right, uh, it doesn't matter whether, when it says normal depth or depth of flow, you are just going to use Y. Alright, it's the same. Alright. 
this this is just you know the various terms that we are going to use. Flow or discharge Q. If you have questions, stop eh? You just raise up your hand eh? So I know you have questions. Right. If not, you'll get bored. <laughs> you know, you're just listening to me. Uh, flow or discharge Q. Sometimes we say rate of flow. We put Q. Sometimes we use uh, the term discharge. It's, it's the same. All right. Which is which represents Q as well. Is the volume of fluid passing across section perpendicular? That means pass the volume of fluid that passes a section eh, perpendicular to the direction of flow per unit time. That means uh, the discharge is actually volume of fluid divided by time. Okay, so therefore you have uh, volume over T L. Okay, uh, A times V. Okay, I didn't put the equation here. Uh, I hope um, here's the thing, right? The volume, the symbol that I use is not this V, eh? but uh, V. I know I I have a cross, okay, of the V there. Uh, um, that is that represents the volume, right? V over T. All right, you have that discharge. Meanwhile, mean velocity is the discharge, right? Q divided by A. Um, a. Remember, eh? I come go. Let's go back. That is A. Did I mention here somewhere? Ah, A. Okay. A is actually the area of the flow. Flow area is not the channel area. Eh? Uh, channel area is larger lah. Should be larger lah because if you look at the flow, it's actually contained within the channel itself. Okay. So, what water parameter is the length of channel? Let's go back a bit. Okay. Water parameter is the length of channel parameter that is wetted or covered by flowing water. When I say wetted or covered by flowing water, right, that means the boundary of the channel that is being touched by this water here, that is your wetted parameter. The, the term is wetted, that means the parameter that is being wetted, lah, all right, by the flowing water. So, A is a cross-sectional because it cut it across cross-sectional area covered by flowing water. So, for example, we have this diagram here. And B is the bottom width. Lah. I think I explained this the second time also. Uh, T is the top width. Right? Hydraulic radius is the ratio of flow area, flow area to water parameter. Uh, it's, it's actually um, um, it's a value that represents some sort of radius lah, okay, uh, that's why you have A over P eh? so, hydraulic radius is equal to A over P hydraulic depth is equal to D over T which is uh, uh, D is equal to A over T sorry, hydraulic depth D is equal to A over T, that means A divided by T lah uh, you give you some representative value of this dot itself like if you look at this A over T right A is actually if you have red, example rectangular A is actually B times Y so if you have uh, the dot is actually if you divide it by uh, width you'll get your Y back so hydraulic dot is kind of representative of some sort of dot lah. okay so you have that lah. D is equal to A over T um, now, this slide here, now, if you ask me whether you want to memorize this, I think this formula is very easy to remember, lah. but sometimes we would give you in your um, test of and final exam as well, this formula. Um, well, it's just R, A, R, 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 R A equals to A or P, and then you have like that, D, A, T, right, or data, D equals to A or T, right? No, uh, but for me, uh, you really need to understand, you know, the word hydraulic depth. When you look at the depth, it should be, you know, the area divided by the width, right? So, it's top width, lah, basically. Radius is some sort of area divided by the parameter. You get as some sort of uh, representative value of radius, okay? Mm. Now, public works, um, this is JKL, right? Public works department. Um, if you do design... If you go out, you practice uh, civil engineering, civil engineer, all right? Soon after you graduate, right? Um, and if you are involved in, you know, um, uh, 
uh, consultancy. Okay, definitely you are going to do design work lah. Okay, um, it, one of the, uh, you know, standard, right, that you are going to follow would be this JKR standard for surface drain lah. If you are involving in infrastructure design, right, uh, structural design is different standard already, eh. Uh, so in infrastructure design, you have, uh, especially for drainage system design, eh, you have this JKR standard, okay? Um, where, you know, this is the example of the various shape of open channel. You have this trapezoidal and of course, um, you have the slope, the side slope given, the high and things like that, minimum. You see this minimum 500 millimeter, right? It says minimum, but of course, when you do design, you have to know how much water or flow will go into this drain. And then you, this is where we are going to calculate the area and the discharge for certain depth for this channel, whether it's sufficient enough to capture the water that comes in, the discharge that comes into this. If it's not sufficient, that means you have to increase the size of this channel. How, how much will you increase? In this case, right, only the width, the bottom width is allowed to be changed. Uh, not the others, alright? The others parameter remain. So, uh, therefore, you need to adjust this width uh, accordingly to your the discharge that you are going to capture. Uh, you have this egg shape. EGG, eh? I put it egg shape lah. Alright, drain, uh, and then all these three are trapezoidal. The different would be the lining, uh, the lining of the channel. This one you have, you know, stone line. This one uh, is cast in situ. That means you do, you, you, you construct the drain there, inside. And uh, this one is earth drain. That means you didn't put any lining. That means you didn't put a stone or concrete. It's just, you do, or you excavate, drain, you leave it like that. It's just, you know, earth drain. Okay. Uh, therefore, you know, the difference uh, of the material that means either earth drain or con concrete or stone, it has different value of roughness. Okay. Of course, uh, I guess this would have higher uh, flow, a higher velocity com uh, uh, subsequently with this type and then finally, most probably this one. Okay. We have slower velocity. Okay. Um, you also, the same standard as well, you have this uh, uh, sort of like triangular, not un, um, but not symmetry, eh? triangular channel. Okay, let's look at this open channel geometry. Eh? I, just give me another five minutes eh, to explain this. Uh, I want to give you an exercise, uh, exercise like, to make up for the remaining one hour. It's just very simple exercise for you to do. Um, channel section, eh? um, the flow area here for trapezoid, uh, for rectangular channel, rectangular section. Eh? Um, okay. The area, flow area is B times Y. Remember this Y is the depth of flow, not the height of the channel, eh? Okay, so the area of flow is B times Y. Um, I want somebody to answer for me. Um, is Sam Shazan there? Sam Shazan is there? Can you help me? You are not there. Who is there? <laughs> okay, uh, okay, you are here, but you, your mind is not working, is it? Okay, so Sham, uh, I call you Sam, uh, Sam, Sam. Um, top width, is, uh, of course, it's B, uh, equals to B uh, for rectangle channel. Can you give me the formula for water perimeter? Remember, the water perimeter is the length, okay, of the perimeter uh, being watered by the floor. Uh. What is it? Can you type it? Can you give me the answer? Just type it. If anyone knows, uh, I hope you'll be ready. Eh? Just in case Sam couldn't answer it, I need your help as well. What is the formula for water parameter? Uh, I think you have the notes already, but it's okay. Lah. Okay. Uh, Sam, are you still there? Okay. Uh, B plus one. Yes, that is correct, correct. You are right. Okay, Sam, you are right. So it's B times Y times, uh, sorry, B plus Y plus Y. So the formula is B plus 2Y, right? Okay, that's good. Okay, so what if, 
the tenth section is triangular. Anyone can give me. You know, you can actually type your answer in the chat box. Anyone can give me the formula for area and right? Oh, sorry, sorry, okay, okay. But area and right? Um, but, but I want you to utilize the Z and Y. I don't want you to give me, you know, half times T times Y. I don't want. I want you to utilize the Z. And I want you to use only Z and Y. There's a reason that. Because if I keep it as another triangular section, right, that if I change Z, you can easily use that same formula to find A. Or, uh, you know, what the parameter and things like that. So, if you can, can give me the formula, uh, okay, no one can give me, eh? <laughs> okay. So, it's Z, Y squared. Now, how do you do that? Now, you see, eh? One, the side slope, eh? When I put that, vertical is one, okay? The horizontal scale is Z. But, if I put it in, this is not, Unitless eh, or uh, dimensionless, but if I need the value of you know the vertical height in uh, which has dimension, y would be equal to y. So the width you know of half of the triangular would be z y. Do you agree with me? If one is is equal to y, then you know, this distance here is ZY. So, therefore, okay, therefore, <laughs> ZY is actually half of T, right? Agree? ZY times Y. Alright, it's actually, the formula is the same. It's half times T times Y. But half of T is ZY. So, the area would be ZY times Y. So, therefore, you get ZY squared. I hope you understand all this because all these are very important. Alright, this is our first class. And then, uh, it's already 302, uh, just bear with me for a while. And then what would happen to top width? Top width, as you know, just now we have ZY, right? So, it's just another part of it. That means ZY plus ZY, you have two ZY. What the parameter, here's the thing. What the parameter would be this plus this length? So, what would be this line here? It's actually Z, Y, Z squared, Y squared plus, uh, okay, again, square root of Z squared, Y squared plus Y squared, okay. You have the Y squared, right? You can factorize the Y squared, therefore, your Y comes out from the square root. But you, the same thing, you have two parts, right? That, that, that's why you times two. So, therefore, you get this formula. Uh, this formula use utilize Z and Y only, alright? Trapezoidal. The same thing here, uh, this one. The area would be, is actually the addition of this, right? You have this rectangular section, you have, you know, this tra triangular section. Rectangular, triangular, you add them up together. It's actually by plus z y squared. Lah. It's actually you can actually separate in the two lah. All right, uh, or three. All right, uh, sections, section sections. And then what is the top width? Top width eh, is actually b plus z y plus z y. So you have b plus two z y. Actually, this at this ah. Uh, all right. Um. However, for vertical parameter, you have to be careful. Eh? You see ah. Eh, for vertical parameter, there's no this y already. It's actually b plus this guy here, which makes up you know the two y square root of one plus z square. Alright, so this plus this plus this. Alright, that is the vertical parameter. I said parameter, vertical eh? parameter. You have to be careful, eh? Alright. Okay, this one the vertical parameter. Okay, this is the formula given, eh? Um. You can validate this formula using your uh, pi d squared for area, right? Pi d squared formula, or uh, there's uh, yeah, pi d squared formula if it it, it is flow, if it's part flow, alright. Uh, pi d squared, you can validate this. That means the two theta will be three hundred sixty degree. It will 
give you the same answer. Alright. Uh, so this is the formula that will be used. We will provide this table. Eh? So area is g squared over 8. Okay. Now you have 2 theta minus sine 2 theta. Let me let me uh, make clarify this. Eh? The 2 theta should be in gradient. You cannot use degree eh? because it doesn't have same unit. Eh? Because when you solve for sine 2 theta, you have some value which is not in degree. Not in uh, the angle, eh? uh, the degree. So therefore, the 2 theta, you need to change it into radian. So radian minus some sort of, uh, you know, value in terms of radian as well. So you are going to, you can get this area. Lah. So remember this 2 theta without the trigonometry functions, you cannot use uh, the value in unit, using the unit of degree. So for example, 180 degree is equal to you know that 180 degree is equal to pi radian. What is the value of pi? Uh, pi is 22 over 7 but I think when you press your calculator it will come out with uh, a, a value lah, which is 2.1 something lah, very long one lah. Okay, so that is your radian eh? um, Alright, and then um, you have top which width, which is d sine theta. This theta, again, in degree. Okay, uh, there's another thing that you have to know. You know your calculator, right? You can set the mode either in degree or... Just a second, right? Um, I'll come back to this. Okay, uh, you can set this... Uh, sorry. The calculator I talk about, I just talk about the calculator where you ha you can change your mode whether it's in degree or in radian. So if you change the uh, the uh, the calculator in the mode of degree, then this value you have to use degree. Okay, degree. Eh? If your calculator is in terms of radian, uh, then you 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 can use you need to use this data in terms of radian already. Okay, so you have to be careful, eh? Okay. Then you have theta d. You have to change this theta into the uh, radian first, lah. Okay. Uh, for water parameter, it's actually this water parameter here. The formula is theta d. It's okay. Don't worry if you don't understand this. I think truth exercise, we are going to, you know, uh, you'll be able to understand further about this. Okay, now... I want you to try, uh, I'll be finishing up my uh, lecture today. I want you to try activity 1.1. Try it on your own first. Try to understand uh, it. Then we are going to look at the answer. I'm going to guide you for the answer. This is some sort of tutorial, right? So I'm going to guide you step by step in our next class, which is on Thursday at eh, 8 a.m. And then, uh, Oh, I, I, oh, I'm giving you this answer. Oh, no, no, no. This is my answer. Sorry. I think I didn't give you the answer. All right. And then um, uh, you can try the other activities first without the answer. I think I have, didn't give you the answer. So try out all these activities. Um, but, but I think if possible, you try out one hour. I think you can try out activity 1.1, 1.2. And if you want to try 1.3, it doesn't matter. All right. You don't have to submit all this, eh? This is just our activity in the class, so we are going to look at this in our next class, I have to say. Um, so far, do you have any question? Anyone? Are you still with me? Guys, girls? Yes, yes Doctor, I'm here. Yes, Doctor. Okay, any questions so far? No, Doctor. Okay, you are good, eh? Good, Alright, so, okay, try out the activities. Uh, I'll come back to you on this Thursday uh, in the morning. Is it okay? okay. Alright, okay. right. so I'll see you, eh? Remember, eh? Right. Remember to make up your one hour with your activities, alright? Okay, take care, eh? Alright, All right. thank you, Doctor. Alright, All see right. you, guys. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Alright. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.
Thank you.